Welcome back as we continue to preview this weekend's Premier League matches. It all gets underway at lunchtime tomorrow at Selhurst Park. Crystal Palace taking on the leaders, Liverpool. Then Newcastle United against Fulham is the late game on Saturday. Sunday, four fixtures to look forward to, including that big one at the bottom of the table between Brighton and Sheffield United. Tottenham face Leicester. And it's Big Sam's first game in charge of West Bromwich Albion in a West Midlands derby against Aston Villa. The matches finish off on Monday night, Burnley taking on Wolves and a London derby between Chelsea and West Ham. You notice I skipped over one of those, a big game on Sunday between Manchester United and Leeds. Man United fresh off the back of coming back to beat Sheffield United last night in the Premier League. And Leeds going to be a fascinating matchup between Manchester United and Leeds. If only there were fans in the stadium. This is what they are so looking forward to, Glenn. Um, let's talk about the teams individually first and then talk about the matchup. Man Manchester United away from home. It's been unbelievable. Last night, going a goal down against Sheffield United, managing to come back and win. They've won all their away matches this mm. season after going a goal down. Mm. But at home, their form has been a bit indifferent. Can you explain that? Mm. Well, I, I just think it's not just United. I just think in general, the sort of home advantage has sort of disappeared. Um, you know, Old Trafford's obviously normally a tough place to go. You know, oh, the crowd was. make it very... Uh, very hostile um, and, and, and players find it tough to perform there but obviously with no fans um, that's kind of eliminated and I think that's worked in their favour that when they're going away to these teams that normally you know the home team go lead and go in the lead and they'll be able to do something about it and defend a result but I just think that that away sort of sorry the home advantage has just disappeared. That goal there for me is one of the goals of the season. The way they moved that ball Pogba thought was instrumental last night Score, I think that's, is that the sixth consecutive game they've scored three away goals in? Could be. I think it is as well, which mm. is another mm. a, a, a record, I think. Yeah. Records away from home, incredible. Mm. What a good performance that last night. But at home, it's only three and six they've scored, which is nothing yeah. at mm. all. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think what Glenn said about home advantages is definitely true. But I think there's also the other factor with United that they're just happiest on the break. And I think it's just much easier. Suits them away. Mm. Yeah, to go away and say, you know, you have the ball, you'll, you'll play a bit. I mean, they, they even did it at Old Trafford at times because there's no fans. They're not mm. going to get anyone not screaming sure. at them going, <laughs> attack, 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 what are you doing? Mm. It's easier to play that way, but it's much easier when you're away from home and the opposition just know, okay, we have a home game, we need to do something here. Mm. That's when they function best. That's when those moves can happen because there's a bit of space to run into and individually they have the pace and the quality to, to expose mm. sides. But at home then, is it even more imperative that we talk about two sixes and a ten, Fernandez is a ten. Mm. That player, I've, I've, I've reiterated it again, that mm. the, the one who can dictate a game from the number six position. If you play mm. Fred and McTominay, Matic and Fred, that you know, combination of all three as two sixes, mm -hmm. surely at home, Van der Beek or Pogba with a McTominay or Fred mm -hmm. or a Matic and Fernandez, mm. surely that would be more helpful. Yeah, I totally agree. I've, I've been saying it for, for months. For me, Matic has to play. I think all the, all the top teams have that anchor player that, you know, just does the, you know, just gets the ball rolling, gets the... Gets the by having him in position, everybody else gets in position. Yeah. Um, and obviously with the, you know, them flying guys they got up front, you know, the pace that they've got, with him building up play, that just sets the whole team going. Um, so for me, Matic needs to be the first player on, on, do, on the eleven. Do you think they play with two sixes then at home sometimes because they're worried about the pace in the middle with Lindelof and Maguire? Yeah, th that's definitely Possibly. one of the reasons. Um, but I do, I do think they struggle with building through the, through the midfield. I think mm. unless Pogba is there, I think they have a problem when people press the midfielders. They're not the type of midfielders like City have, like even like Liverpool have, who can get out of tight spaces and then start the attack. And I think it's quite easy, for example, if Matic, for all the defensive solidity he brings, mm -hmm. he's also a pressing victim. Mm -hmm. I think Leeds will look at him and think, OK, Matic has the ball, back to goal, bang, we're going to go. That, that's mm -hmm. going to be our game plan, because he isn't, he isn't that mobile anymore on the ball. Mm. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really interesting what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said in that press conference there saying that every game is like a cup final now already mm. we're so early in the season I mean you know about that for years haven't they really yeah. it's a, I think well. it's a mental framework you know for for teams to say we the only way to do anything in this league is just to treat every single game as if it's a big event mm. in itself I don't think he believes it is a cup final I don't think the players do, do but it's a way of sort of pretending that you know we can we can start again and I mean to be fair this game will 
feel more like it because of the historic yeah. connotations. And I think also the way that the leads play, because leads don't let you breathe. <laughs> they <laughs> give you a, a terrible time. And if United start slow again, which has been a bit of a thing from behind often, because yeah. for whatever reason, they don't seem to be on it, to be on it, I think Leeds could really, really cause trouble there. We've yeah. talked about Leeds a lot on this show, mm. and I was doing some stats the other day. In the last three seasons, Bielsa's side have had less points in the second half of the season than they did the first. I think it happened when he was at Bilbao in the first season in Marseille. So people say about the way they train, how dynamic they are. We see the, mm. the, way, the way they broke against Newcastle in the week until the last minute. Lemons. So is it important? that lead try and accumulate 23, 24 points in the first half of the season because statistically yeah. in the second half they don't accumulate as much points. Yeah, I think they're fantastic to watch but ultimately it's their first season back in, it, in, in, the, in the big league so I think yeah, they just need to get to that safety point and then, and then build from there because like you say, if they're going to tailor off and I think that mainly down to the, to the way they train because um, you know the way they play is obviously so high intensity that it's hard to maintain, yeah. um, so it's natural to dip off. Um, obviously, I don't know what they do in training or how they train towards the end of the season, but, mm. but I think it will be, that will be the main reason, that the fact that they, they, you can't perform to this level with this much energy every single week. Rafa mm. mentioned that kind of suffocating pressure that Leeds put on opposition. Mm. As a defender, would you just hate coming up against a side like this? Yeah, you would. Um, you know, there's times in a game when, when you want a breather. Um, whether it's you've been under pressure or you, you, you sort of have the breather on the ball, but Leeds, they don't allow you to do that. So uh, they're fantastic in, in, in that sense, but, but you can also get them very easy. You know, Newcastle, um, they didn't play well at all and scored two goals. Um, so against a better team, they, they, I think the result would have been... Uh, I think the result flattered Leeds, put it that way. Mm. I mean, that's the thing. Once you play through that press, you yeah. have a lot of space. Mm. So yeah. Solskjaer will think, OK, it's going to be tough for us to build... But why not go direct? Why not maybe put Pogba in a slightly more advanced position? He can hold up the yeah. ball, turn, and there's a couple of runners, and we're in. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be the game plan, I think. Um, but Leeds, of course, you know, don't always give you then the time to pick the, the, the right pass, and then mm. can become very kind of disjointed and wild, which they want. They you can want see the goals, don't they? Like if they're only West Brom, they can see them Absolutely. Ball. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, there's definitely going to be goals in this game, isn't there? Well, hopefully. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> what, what, what do you think the score is going to be, Glenn, in this one? Well, um, could no, be, no. Could, yeah, be, could no, be anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got 2 2. Oh, OK. 2 2. I'm going to go 3 2 United. Three, OK, United win, and we'll see Robbie's prediction in just a moment. All right, uh, another big game to come this weekend. In fact, it's on Monday. It's off the back of a win as well. Let's hear from both of managers now. Can't wait. It's been too long, of course. I know how much it means for our supporters. I know how much it means for our club. And uh, the other bit is it's a different type of leads coming up with, uh, with a coach that's uh, really done a great job with them uh, and will test us to the limit. You need to look at who's fit, obviously. Uh, you, you might get injuries, but you need to look at the opposition as well. Uh, and you need to look at whoever performs. You've got to just go one game at a time. Every game now is a cup final. It's, uh, it's going to be uh, relentless with, with a game after game after game. But w when you perform well, play well and win, uh, you, you can't wait for the next one. And the next one's a big one for us. Bueno, ganar eh, siempre es positivo, eh, no solamente por lo que representa en relación al partido, sino porque permite esperar con calma el próximo juego. Oh, well, winning is always a, a positive thing uh, and it helps you uh, to go into the next game more calm. This is